And good morning, everyone, and welcome to Small Biz Matters, the half-hour program where you work on your business rather than in it. Thank you so much for joining me for another week of all things small business and small business info. That's what today is all about. So I'm your trusted host, Alexi Boyd, here to help you along the crazy road that is small business. Now, I thought today we'll have a little bit of a chat about what's happening in the news for small business. There's been quite a lot of uh, talk and just various information coming out of um, federal, state, local government, in fact, that does um, and has impacts on businesses in the hornsby Kuringai area and, in, and of course, broadly as well for, for businesses in general. Um, just a quick little overview of who we've had on the show in the last few weeks. We, of course, last week had Brian Doricott, who is a fantastic expert in all things capital venture. And I found it a really interesting program for people who don't have a lot of familiarity with capital investment, how to get equity, for example, what to do when you want to sell shares in your business, crowdsourcing, That was a really interesting program to find out the different aspects and ways in which you can operate to ensure that you improve your prospects of getting that capital, whichever avenue you go down. And I found it interesting, Brian was telling us that depending on which method you have, all of them require one solid thing, which is, of course, your back end under control. And we talk a lot about that on the show. We talk about the importance of having processes and procedures and admin under control and, of course, very good bookkeeping practices. But it was interesting to hear it from a point of view of business growth. If you want to invest capital in your business, if you want others to invest in your business, even if it's family members, you need to have those books and those processes and procedures under control. One of the aspects we talk about a lot on Small Biz Matters is the importance of admin and of course having that strong base and uh, knowing what's going on in your business in that perspective uh, it's very important because although a lot of people think well it's just the here and the now I've got to look at growth I've got to look at sales and marketing I've got to look at where the next client is coming from but we forget that the importance of admin is is giving value to your business it actually adds value it makes it worth um, something. And in fact, if your processes, procedures and all of your accounts are under control, you uh, actually look more, more, um, easy to, more easy to invest in from an equity point of view. And I thought that that was a really interesting program from Brian. So just a big thank you to Brian for coming on the show. That was last week. And then of course, on the 31st of January, we had um, Gareth Huxham from Huxham Energy Consulting, and he was talking a lot about uh, energy and how that, of course, has been in the news hugely over the last couple of weeks with all the heat waves that we're having and the threats of rolling outages. I always think of rolling outages of, as a third world problem, but clearly not. If it's a uh, suburb by suburb mentality we've got to get our heads around, then certainly as small businesses, we need to plan for that because let's face it, the world is not cooling down, it's getting warmer. We're going to see increased periods of uh, global warmth and also increased periods of of, uh, heat waves like we experienced in the last couple of weeks. And as small businesses, there's certainly things that you can do to improve not only your energy footprint, which is a secondary thing, but actually reduce your costs. So we chatted a little bit about Uh, renewable energy, solar versus uh, battery power. And in fact, we did mention that that's an entire show onto itself. So we'll probably have um, Gareth coming on the show a little bit later in the year talking about energy and battery powers and solar and all that stuff and renewable energies. But what we did talk about is really practical ways that you can reduce your energy bill. And uh, that requires having a look at what you're paying now, having a look at where your energy consumption is. Um, There's obviously small things that we're all familiar with that we can do over weekends or in down periods like Christmas to New Year. Really simple things that I didn't even think of, like turn off the bar fridge in the office. There's the obvious ones such as turn off all the screens, uh, shut down your computer completely, um, turn off the plugs at the wall because, of course, 10% of your energy comes through as those standby um, performances for all of your electrical devices. But things like turning off the fridge, um, you know, um, switching off the air con so it's not even on standby, a whole lot of different things that you can do to make sure you're not consuming energy and therefore costing you money over down periods such as weekends and on Christmas breaks. But the analysis of the bills I found really interesting. And Gareth is obviously an expert when it comes to energy um, consumption 
um, I found it quite interesting that we do have smaller players in the market out there, the power shops, the, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones, but I have come across uh, bills where people have been paying for smaller providers and not just the Energy Australia's. And we all presume, because we've got our consumer hats on, that because we're a small business, that that's how we should be treated. When in fact, chances are, uh, even as a small business or a medium sized business, you actually fall into a different category. So you've got better buying position um, when it comes to discussing this th- these things with the energy providers. So I thought that was an interesting show. If you want to, literally, if you want to save yourself some money um, by looking at your energy and and analysing your bills, definitely have a listen to that show. That was on the 31st. Now, I'm talking about all of my blogs and podcasts that are available on the smallbizmatters.com.au website. You can listen to them in their entirety and you can also read through the script that we've had from the program. And of course, um, just the first one as we came back from the Christmas break was, of course, uh, Dr. Deborah Deering, who is the Greater Sydney Commission Northerner Commissioner, who is in charge of all areas um, north of Milsons Point, all the way up to Hornsby and beyond and of course the Sydney Greater Commission at the moment is looking for submissions um, in 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 respect to their uh, to their initial report which has come out and they have spoken to community groups they have spoken to local schools they've spoken to local government and state government and trickled it all the way through all the different facets of the community and now they want to hear from individuals and businesses and it doesn't mean you have to sit there and read through a 30 50 100 page report and create some sort of a response that is official you can interact with them in different ways and I really strongly encourage everyone to go to the Greater Sydney Commission website and actually have a read through of the uh, the, the top end uh, not the top end but the, the overall view the the overall uh, spotlight if you will of the report and have a think about what you would like to see change generationally we're not talking about the next five minutes we're not talking between now and the next state or federal or local election we're talking about our area and how you as a business would like to see businesses like you succeed with the support of those three levels of government and how they can do it now it could be as simple as listen we are screaming out for some sort of a meeting facility that businesses can use Okay, that's a very simple one. Um, We are screaming out for networking opportunities. Um, We would love the support of the local council whenever business events are on. I'm just thinking about experiences that I've had, but you in your business may be, uh, have a particular facet that interests you or perhaps you're in, in manufacturing. Maybe you need more of a hub, a specialized hub where groups come together to work on projects. I know that that's something that BBP was talking about earlier in the year. So there's different ways that the government should be thinking about it. And they're not going to know unless we as small, medium-sized businesses and even individuals say what we would like to see generationally happen. So as I mentioned before, there's different ways that you can interact through submissions. So you can, of course, make an official submission. You can write um, a few bullet points all the way through to a proper report in your business name. You can get together with a local community group, which might in turn be making a submission, or you can ask them to make a submission, such as a, perhaps a chamber of commerce or something like that. Um, and there's also, uh, you can connect and discuss and lend your opinions to the three ways that they're communicating on a more broad level, which might be Facebook, LinkedIn, and open chats on the website and that is a way that the Greater Sydney Commission might introduce a topic uh, and they're gauging public interest by the way people give their opinions on those on those three uh, platforms. So I really encourage you to to go to the website greater.sydney, have a look at the uh, spotlight reports, um, get an overview of what they're they're broadly planning and give your opinion because uh, we, we should all be considered. We are all, um, you know, in our own right, an entity that needs to be factored into this this process. So I strongly encourage everyone to do that. And at the very least, do go ahead and like their Facebook page so that when topics pop up, you can very easily and simply just give a quick opinion on, on how you feel about that particular aspect. So it is exciting. I, I know that a few businesses I've spoken to since having Deborah on the show have 
you know, expressed a degree of cynicism. But I should mention that um, Deborah is incredibly passionate. She's she has already met with a great number of groups and is very passionate about making sure that everyone's voice is heard and considered. Um, and you can't be heard or considered unless you actually make submissions or, or make comments through those different levels. Uh, so the Greater Sydney Commission, that was on the 24th of January. You can have a listen to that show. A very interesting show, shedding a light on what they plan to do with the northern area of Sydney moving into the future. So I'd like to introduce everyone. I'd like, well, I'd like to get everybody familiar with those, uh, the blogs and podcasts because those interviews are there in full for you to listen to. Um, and of course, if you yourself have a program that you would like us to cover or there's a topic you are particularly interested in and would like some more information or education on, uh, please let us know and we will find for you an expert that can come in and talk about that particular topic. I know one of the uh, pinch points that people have spoken to me publicly have been uh, things like HR. So we're going to look at getting someone from the HR industry coming in and talking about interviewing and uh, getting getting people on uh, on the show that can help you to learn more about how to run your business effectively. At the moment, you're listening to Small Biz Matters. We're going to take a quick break and uh, then come back and have a look at the Small Biz Matters event calendar. You're listening to Triple H 100.1 FM. Now, I thought it might be interesting to have a look at the New South Wales Business Chamber uh, survey results that have come out for the last quarter. The December business quarter conditions have come out. And in general, uh, if we just have a quick look at the report, you can find this on the New South Wales Business Chamber website if you want to have a look at more in depth into the uh, the reporting um, mechanisms and, and what it is that their findings. But Basically, that indicates New South Wales businesses remain optimistic. Expectations for the first quarter of 2017 have moderated compared with September um, and from the same period last year. In particular, perception of economy's current performance increased to 18.4%, up 5.7 points, um, which is actually the highest result since 2009. The expected performance of the New South Wales economy decreased sharply, so expected performance coming moving forward, uh, it decreased sharply 20.9 points down 15.2 points. So this is obviously some some residual from Christmas perhaps from the previous quarter and 12.4 points on the previous year. Although we're still in positive territory, it's the lowest result since March 2015. So there's quite a lot of fluctuations there. Um, Most of the respondents reported an increase in operating costs up two points with construction, accommodation and food source, food sectors particularly affected by elevation costs. In fact, 45.1% and 47.4% respectively reporting increased costs. So, so quite a high cost in construction, accommodation and food services. Sales revenue continued to be strong, uh, with, uh, but while profits fell down 2.7, that's obviously an indicator of those operating costs affecting things. Um, the index remains in positive territory and is strong within the context of the series. I don't know what that means, but I think it just means that everything is still positive despite these fluctuating numbers. Um, And the survey also indicated that labour demand remains strong. Uh, Respondents said that there were increasing staff numbers with an index adding 0.9 points to 8.4, while capital spending and capacity utilisation decreased. That's kind of interesting considering... um, uh, factoring in what we the, the guest we had on the show last week, Brian, it might just be an interesting thing to have a listen to both of those and read through the report at the same time. So the results of the December um, Business Satisfaction Survey demonstrate a continued strength in the New South Wales business environment. However, the survey indicates that businesses are less optimistic than they have been in recent surveys with actual business performance remaining strong. This could, at least in part, reflect a convergence between current and expected performance measures rather than a turnaround in business conditions. So some interesting survey there. I thought that was interesting to share with you. Statistically, you can, of course, find out more about those particular numbers via the New South Wales Business Chamber website. Uh, Another report I wanted to let you know about, just flicking through the news and what's pertinent to to small business, something that didn't really make, get much traction in the media, but I just wanted to highlight everybody. The small business ombudsman, Kate Carnell, has actually called for a uh, small business award um, a simple award for small businesses for all employees. Um, I think it's it's quite interesting. I know from my experience with small businesses, lots of people struggle with knowing what award to use. It's, it's easier for those in the trades because they're familiar with the award system. But for those, for example, who are taking on someone who's a sales 
are very simply just working on sales or perhaps admin, it's hard for them to know which award is applicable. Now, I have to say that the Fair Work Ombudsman website is very good for this. It makes it makes it quite easy to search through the awards what you want. But might I encourage everyone, as always, when you do any calculations or when you f- seek any information through those websites, that you always print off that page as a PDF and keep it as evidence of research that you did to work out what you should be paying your employees. Uh, those those pieces of evidence do um, kind of stand up in unfair dismissal cases or if the ombudsman decides to come knocking on your door to find out what you're paying your employees, you can at least say, look, I've done some due diligence in trying to discover and research properly. I went to your website to work out what to pay my employees. But it is a minefield. And I think that's perhaps what Kate Carnell is, is putting out there that, that we should, uh, you know, it is due for an overhaul. It is, there's literally hundreds of different awards. It's very difficult to navigate your way through them, not necessarily through the website, but to navigate them, your way through those. And if you don't have an HR specialist on hand, um, you can't be a hundred percent sure that you're doing the right thing. So it's, she wants to look at the feasibility of a small business award in in relations to workplace relations. Um, She mentioned that the unions won't, of course, be happy with that, but it's very difficult for the the small businesses to comply um, and it is absolutely ridiculously uh, complex, as anybody who runs a small business will know. It's... um, We just need something simple, like a one or page, two page document, she says, that you can just be knowing that you're doing things the right way. Uh, Not having an incredibly long workplace relations awards is much simpler approach for little businesses that don't have the human resources departments and don't have people on their staff to interpret legislation. It has to be easier to comply with. That's a quote from Kate Carnell there. Uh, So it's it's an interesting prospect. It's It's an interesting thought. We should definitely get someone on HR to come along and talk us through that because perhaps having a simple award might make it easy, but then you can argue, well, you know, a carpenter is a small business, as is someone who's uh, a business consultant and just needs someone who's doing admin. Um, those two people are not necessarily doing the same thing. They might be the same age, but they'll have different levels of training, different levels of experience. So it is complex. I'm not sure how to get around that, but I think it's an interesting conversation to have. So keep an eye on those news websites. Um, it's a shame that that didn't get more traction, to be honest, because I think it's an important change. Um, perhaps we should think about getting Julie and Lisa on the program to talk us through some forward thinking um, or or new ideas and fresh ideas that the government might be having with small business. We all know quite disappointedly that the federal cabinet dropped the small business position from cabinet, which I found very disappointing. Um, It would be good to see that they increase the importance of small business once again, since it seems to have slipped off the agenda. Thanks for joining me this week, everyone. I will see you all next week with another fabulous guest on the show. And uh, if, of course, you'd like to be a guest, do get in touch. Check us out on Facebook. Thanks for joining me. I'm Alexi. You're listening to Small Biz Matters on Triple H 100.1 FM.